You know, as with my second video, the goal here is to provide compelling new information that will be both informative and something that you might even find astonishing. And I'd like to think also you're going to discover that that's the case here, and I want to start us off by watching this uh, introductory uh, video collage short one that takes off where I left off in the last video, kind of giving you an intro to this. And you're going to see here some things that I hope you'll just really appreciate. Enjoy the just creative and beautiful miracle that are the animals and life on planet Earth. Take a look. some of the wonder and delight that I always feel when I look at this beautiful variety of life on, uh, on this planet. And personally, I, I don't think there's enough descriptive words to describe the profound variety of life found on this planet. We're going to uh, explore a little bit of that in this particular video, and I hope you're going to find, uh, find some things out that you just didn't know. Well, why then is there such stunning variety and beauty of life on this planet? Ever ask yourself that? Okay, so now I'm going to ask you to just watch this next video clip very carefully. Oh, and by the way, that, well, that doesn't mean you don't need to watch and listen to everything else on this video carefully. But watch this now. We're going to look at the amazing molecular machines. And i got to look at my notes here because, good grief, this is the name of the video. The Untangler of Knots, the amazing Topiosomacer Ace <laughs> Molecular Machinery. You all know what that is anyway, right? Take a look. Wouldn't it be amazing if there were a device that untangled knots automatically? Inside your body, there is. It's called a Topoisomerase. It untangles knots in our DNA in an incredible process that keeps us all alive. DNA carries assembly instructions required for your body to generate new cells. But for DNA to do its work, it must be copied in a process known as replication. During replication, the DNA strands are separated and protein machines use each strand to make a copy of the opposite strand. The end result is two copies of the original DNA. However, DNA replication faces a life or death challenge before it can complete its mission. Separating the DNA strands causes twisting in the portion of DNA that has not yet been separated. Eventually, the tension from the twisting increases so much that the uncopied segment of DNA wraps around itself in what are referred to as supercoils. If nothing intervenes, this buildup of supercoils will completely shut down the DNA replication process since the two strands can no longer be separated and your cells will die. 
enter special proteins called topoisomerases to the rescue. Topoisomerases are amazing molecular machines that untangle knots. They come in two main types. Type 2 typically has three main sections. An upper gate, a middle gate and a lower gate. Each gate can open or close during the protein's operation. A type 2 topoisomerase untangles DNA in four main steps. First, after two DNA segments enter through the top gate, it uses the middle gate to break one segment of DNA apart. Well, I stopped the, the clip here because the point is already made. What an absolutely stunning example, among thousands, by the way, that show the mind-numbing complexity of the designed and intelligent programming that's embedded in microscopic segments of all life molecules, like DNA. And that's a good point, I think, to launch into this uh, theme uh, in video three here on the intelligent design of all life on Earth. So we'll be examining more of these unimaginable discoveries as we move along. And you know, with all this, I can't help but wonder how in the world anyone can still cling tightly to what seems to me to be the irrational conclusion that blind chance evolved such specified intelligent complexity over eons of time that we see on Earth. But ironically, natural selection and chance have been vested with some kind of almost magical occult powers, if you will, that, that somehow extraordinarily complex new species just sort of come about and produce major variations in the existing ones. Just sort of a, a theory of goo to you, as one scientist said, in terms of life somehow assembling itself from a kind of imagined primordial chemical soup on an uh, early Earth. And then the theory proclaimed as fact goes this way, that primitive life ultimately somehow advanced itself by the magic of evolution via a parade of tiny chances by the millions of natural selection, mutation, and chance over billions of years. And voila, here, you and I are the result, right? Well, well, what do you say we now move on to reality? So in this little video series, first the universe in video one and two, and now life here in video three, we're examining new evidence of the designed in intelligent sciences discovering more and more of. And I'll be showing you several more clips uh, by experts in biochemistry and specifically several prominent microbiologists currently analyzing the utterly amazing new abundance of discoveries pertaining to life molecules. Now, especially the complex DNA folds. So let's watch this next clip with a famous scientist and author, Dr. Michael Behe as he describes the absolutely magnificent, incredible design inherent in the seemingly simple fact of blood clotting. Watch now and be amazed. A cut in a person's skin allows blood to flow freely. But with a cut this size, in a short time, the bleeding stops on its own. How does it do that? The answer is not that the blood just dries up and plugs the hole. It stopped because of a sophisticated emergency response system operating under her skin. It's called the blood clotting cascade, and it's one of the true wonders of human physiology. Here's an overview of how it works. Here's the cut from the thorn. As the red blood cells flow out, there's nothing to stop them. This does not look good for our gardener. But watch this. These are chemical signals. It's a 911 call. And here come our body's first responders. They're called platelets. They might not look impressive, but they're actually mighty morphing heroes. As they land, these remarkable transformers stretch out and begin to form a plug. They also release more chemical messengers to summon reinforcements. More platelets arrive and eventually the outflow is slowed. 
Whew, it's a good start, but this barrier isn't strong enough to hold for long. We actually need a different team of transformers to save the day. The system activates another series of chemical signals. To the rescue comes an absolute marvel of molecular biology, fibrinogen. These guys do serious work, and their powers need to be used judiciously. So, at the correct time, thrombin shows up to activate it. The fibrinogen molecules then transform into fibrin. Now, watch as the fibrin link end to end to make strands, and they form a super secure mesh. This process is called coagulation. That's just incredible, isn't it? All right, now let me share with you some important facts as a, a bit of a further foundation in this video. First and foremost, intelligent design is about the truth and reality of the nature of the origins of the universe and all life on Earth. One scientist described this new movement among a growing number of researchers simply as, quote, the study of patterns in the universe and nature that are best explained as the product of intelligence, unquote. Well, that just goes, though, against the grain, unfortunately, of still a sizable number of those working in the life sciences field. So as they now circle the wagons defending Darwinism, many scientists are still holding on tightly to a belief that there exists a purely naturalistic, non-intelligent, if you will, cause and effect for the origins of all the varied life on Earth. And an example of this thinking is Douglas Futima, whose internet bio lists him as a distinguished evolutionary biologist. And he wrote this. By coupling the undirected, purposeless variations to the blind, uncaring process of natural selection, Darwin made the theological or spiritual explanation of the life processes superfluous." Unquote. Well, this steadfast, traditional, and by my way of thinking, rather arrogant Darwinian dogma has become uh, almost a required mantra to not only be followed, but to be literally clung to as a cherished belief system. It becomes, as one ID scientist observed, scientism, which is a form of scientific religion, the way it's defined. Uh, that means faith. And as I had mentioned earlier, Darwinian evolution is, is now, and has been for many years, the only accepted theory for life origins, scientism. Well, that said, it is also, again, the mandated requirement for instruction in nearly all public schools, universities, etc. PBS broadcasts like Nature, uh, NOVA programs, textbooks, etc. And all over the internet, I'm sad to, sorry to say. But because of so much of the new groundbreaking research and scientific papers by scientists standing together in the growing ID movement, evolutionary scientists are often feeling that they're being backed into a corner and have defensively said things like, well, okay, we admit that life does give the appearance of having been designed, but that's just how it appears. Which we, as people of faith, respond, yeah, it certainly does appear that way because, gee whiz, it is <laughs> designed. Which maybe is the more logical conclusion, right? Okay, time to watch another uh, brief clip. Now this one is by a man rec I recently interviewed, a uh, brilliant guy, Dr. Brian Miller, trained at MIT, senior fellow of the internationally renowned Discovery Institute. And in this clip, Dr. Miller answers a few questions about the relevance of engineering to biology. Take a look at this one. Optimization processes cannot create anything new. It makes no sense when you talk about creating some new engineering model that's irreducibly complex based on a completely separate design logic. Engineers know this. So again, remember also all the empirical evidence, all of it, shows that evolutionary processes only modify pre-existing structures. They do not create new structures. They optimize, they do not create anything novel. And a lot of that optimization is not random, it's pre-programmed. So, here he explains the logical connection between machine engineering, as a good analogy to the intelligent design evidence of life. 
You know, but almost as if they're doubling down on their denial of design, a number of scientists today are proudly proclaiming themselves to be members of what is referred to as the New Atheists. You know, but I, I, I have to tell you, I'm, I still haven't gotten used to the old atheism. Nor, of course, uh, do many of us agree with uh, either the old or the new models. Uh, but, but unfortunately, it seems that mainstream science today just can't allow any of the strong new evidence for intelligent design to possibly suggest that there just might exist an all-powerful God existing eternally outside of this space-time dimension who created everything within this dimension and one of vast intellect. think that faith is a religious word it means believing where there's no evidence that's nonsense faith is an ordinary word it means trust and it's as important in science as it is in any other field they've done a fantastic job of making us think that we're the ones who believe fantastical things but really it's it's the ones who deny God who appear to me to be living in this fantasy world that out of nothing everything comes science can answer many questions but it cannot answer the questions of meaning in with that was discovered relatively recently and that is the fact that the human genome is the longest word contains the longest word we've ever discovered 3.4 billion chemical letters all arranged in a row and when Francis Collins stood beside the president of the United States and announced that they decoded it they said this is uh, the language of God and there in our genetics and every one of the tr 10 trillion cells in our bodies is a lengthy word and that to my mind speaks directly of an intelligent input from a speaking God that this universe is incredibly fine-tuned to have carbon-based life on it the basic constants of nature are so precise have to be so precise otherwise the universe wouldn't exist and again that demands explanation every scientist sees that it demands an explanation remember this please the mind-boggling complexity of the very first dna life molecules no conventional darwinian evolutionist check it out has ever come up with anything like a rational explanation of just how the equivalent of volumes, encyclopedic volumes of encoded instructions, much more vast than even the most complex computer code, according to Bill Gates, who said DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. So how did this unimaginably complex design code randomly come about and even the simplest primitive bacteria on an early earth and of course the most amazing of all the complexity of advanced life like us well it's well been said I think that the Darwinian theory of evolution explains the survival of existing species but not the arrival of any species you get the difference um, especially complex life on Earth. And it fails to explain all of the a major inexplicably complex morphological changes that are required from one species to another to explain the molecules to man theory of evolution, which is what Darwinian evolution is and what most of you learned in school. Well, you'll often hear among the mainstream scientific community who'll not tolerate dissenting opinions to their position, something like this, quote, I don't believe in God, I believe in science. Well, that sounds very profound, but isn't that a clear statement of faith? That's what we had called scientism earlier in this uh, video series. It's a clear statement of faith. But 
as I wrapped up the, uh, our series here, it's time to dig in much deeper. And for those of you willing to stay in, I'd like you to consider the most profound message any human being will ever hear. And many of us believe it's the most critically important because it answers the question, what's going to happen to me when I die? Well, it's the end point of life and it's the most profound question anyone could ever answer. And it's the culmination of this video series where we started showing the newest evidence of amazing design of the universe and then moved into the design of life to show you that there's a supreme intelligent being out there and as Christians we call that being God. So I really hope that some of you are going to stay in for this vital and all important message as we close out. One of the things that was so important to me as a brand new believer was to be able to reconcile seemingly opposing ideas or disciplines like math and science, which I've always loved in school, and then this idea of faith. I decided to end video three right here, officially, I guess you could say, but I'm going to put on the uh, link below on the left, just tap on. If you're willing to stay with this. For those of you who are just not sure about eternity and about where you'll be spending it, if that has ever bothered you, or if you've ever lost a friend or a family member suddenly wondered where they went, where are they now, where will they be forever, the Christian faith has the true answers to that. And this is what you're going to hear in the next video. The problem of humanity and the solution for this all-important life message. Not just life message, but eternity message.